Blazer Bootstrap Components, Part 1. In this video, we'll look at the bootstrap components you can use in your web pages. These are not the form input components, but rather the layout and page flow components. For the form input elements, there's a link in the description below. There are 32 bootstrap layout flow components. In part one, we'll demonstrate the first 10 of these components, but you'll find links to part two and three in the description below. We've also placed links at the end of this video. Note that the card, carousel, and chart components have separate videos of their own, and you can also find links to them in the description below. Create a new Blazor web app. We'll use the long-term support.NET 8, and you can choose either server or web assembly. Make sure to set interactivity location to per page or component. Once created, you can delete the sample counter and weather pages. First, we need to install and set up the Bootstrap package. If you browse to docs.blazerbootstrap.com, you'll find instructions under Getting Started, depending on whether your project is a WebAssembly or server app. If you're already familiar with setting up Bootstrap, you can skip to the next section. You can find the different sections in the description below. First, we'll need to install the Blazor Bootstrap package. Then, from the instructions, copy the CSS references and paste them into the head section of your app.razor file. You can also remove any previous references to Bootstrap. Also copy the script references from the instructions and also add them into the app.razor file just after the web.js reference. Finally, we'll add the service to our program CS file. and add a using statement to the imports file so we don't need to repeat it in our page components. The first component we'll look at is the accordion. The accordion is a list of items that you can expand or minimize by clicking on an item to show or hide its contents. We'll add a new Razor component to the Pages folder and call it Accordion Page. Then turn it into a Razor page by using the Page Directive and setting its render mode to Interactive Server. In NavMenu.Razor, we'll add a menu link to every page we're going to add. Since the full bootstrap is installed, you can use the proper bootstrap icons. You can find the full list of icons at icons.getbootstrap.com. In the nav menu.razor.css file, we'll adjust the BI class a bit to accommodate the bootstrap icons. 
Just to be a bit fancy, we'll add a link to every page in a list on the home page. Right, with all that navigation stuff out of the way, let's look at the components. Back in our accordion page, we've added an accordion element. Inside are multiple accordion items. The title element is what will be displayed on top, and the content tag will contain what will be displayed when the item is expanded. Let's see this in action. The title can be a lot more than just a string of text. If you remove the title attribute and add a title template tag, you customize your title. Here we added an icon to the title text. You can remove the box frame from the items and just show a separator line between them by setting the accordion's flush attribute to true. Of course, you can also set which item in the accordion is expanded by default by setting that item's active attribute to true. Lastly, there are four accordion events. The on showing event, which fires when an item is clicked to open, the on shown event, which fires after the item has opened, the on hiding event, which fires when the item is busy closing, and the on hidden event, which fires after the item has closed. Below our accordion element, we'll list the fired events which we keep in a list of strings. When one of the events executes a method, we simply add a message to our list of event strings. Next, we'll look at the alert component. The alert is a colored bar with some text and other content that you can make appear on your page. We've added another razor component called alert page and turned it into a page component and set its render mode to interactive. The alert component comes in eight built-in colors. You place your content that you want displayed between the alert tags. Let's see what this looks like. Since we can add just about anything for the content, let's add an icon. It also has a built-in dismissal button, which you can activate by setting the dismissible attribute to true. Since we can add anything to the content, let's add a button. But I also want to demonstrate how to reference the alert element in code, so this will be a custom button to close the alert message. First, we added a reference to an alert variable in our code. Then, our button when clicked calls a method to close this particular alert. The badge component is an indicator in the shape of a pill or circle and comes in eight colors. Here's an example you may have seen before. It's used to indicate the number of messages. The badge element has a color attribute where you can use one of the eight built-in badge colors if you're like. The indicator type attribute specifies the shape of the badge and this comes in two flavors, either rounded pill or rounded circle. Then between the tags, you can specify the value it must display. You can use a badge on a button. Here we create a button with a primary color, and in its contents, we have a badge with a danger color. We also added an icon into the badge contents. Let's see what this looks like.
When using with something like a button, a badge can have a relative position to the button. You set the badge's position or placement with its placement attribute. There are nine relative positions for a badge. Left top, middle, and bottom, center top, middle, and bottom, and right top, middle, and bottom. Here's an example of using the rounded circle shape as an indicator to draw the user's attention to this button. Notice there's no value in the badge. Let's see what it looks like. Our next component is the breadcrumb component. This represents your current path or task, and you can click on any part of the path to quickly navigate to that page or task. We've added a breadcrumb page razor component. The breadcrumb element has one attribute, the items attribute, that points to a list of breadcrumb items. Every breadcrumb item we add to the list will consecutively add to the path. Here we set the text to display in the path and the actual path for that item in the breadcrumb. You can set the is current page property to true for the current page. If you want to change the separator, use the style attribute and set the character for the bootstrap breadcrumb divider property. Since we've set the href path for every breadcrumb item, you can click on a breadcrumb to take you to that page. Next in the list is the button component. There's a lot more to a button than meets the eye. The button comes in nine built-in colors. Note how the link color displays the button content as if it was a link. Button, of course, can have a type. Here we see the link and submit type. They can use the to attribute to specify a navigation route when the button is clicked. We can set the button's outline attribute to display it as an outline, and we can set its size to one of the three built-in button sizes. Of course, you can disable a button by setting its disable attribute to true. You can add tooltips to your buttons by setting the tooltip title attribute to the text you want to display in the tooltip. And optionally, you can set where the tooltip must pop up by setting the tooltip placement attribute to one of the four locations, top, right, bottom, and left. Also, you can change the color of the tooltip by setting it to one of the built-in tooltip color values. Use spinners within buttons to indicate an action is currently processing. You can activate a spinner by setting the loading attribute to true. The button's text will by default then become loading. However, you can change the loading text through the loading text attribute. Also, you can change the template of the spinner animation as shown here in the loading template. Of course, you can manually turn the spinner on and off. Here we got a button that references a button variable in the code section, and when it's clicked, it calls a method. The method executes the button's show loading method and changes the button's text. After three seconds, it executes hide loading, which will remove the spinner and restore the button's original text. The last thing about buttons are their events. There's the normal single on click event that executes a method in code, the double click event that requires the button to be double clicked before the event fires. And we also call a method with arguments. The methods that are called by the button events simply changes the message that is displayed. 
for the onClickWithArguments method, we added a string parameter to accept the argument passed to the method. Then we have the callout component. Essentially, this is just a colored box with a title and some content. You can choose one of the built-in colors, like warning, and it will display the box in a yellowish color and provide the appropriate icon and the title will be warning. If you don't specify the callout color for the color attribute, it becomes a default gray note callout. When you do set the color, the callout box will take on the preset color and title. Anything you place between the callout tags will be displayed as the content of the callout. You can override the automatic heading by setting the heading attribute. Or if you like, you can completely hide the heading by setting the hide heading attribute to true. And that's about all there is about callouts. There are already videos for the card, carousel, and chart components. You can find links to these videos in the description below. Our final component for part one is the collapse component. You can show a collapsed component, hide it, or toggle between showing and hiding it. Here we added three buttons to call methods to show, hide, and toggle the collapse element. The collapse element references a collapse variable in code, which allows us to call these collapse methods. Between the collapse tags, you can specify its content, which can be just about anything. But here, we used a card element with some card body content. You can make the content slide in and out horizontally by setting the horizontal attribute to true. Also, we gave our card a width so it doesn't stretch the entire page width. Lastly, the collapse element has four events that fire when the content starts showing, is showing, starts hiding, and is hidden. Here we make the events call methods to add messages to a list which is displayed. Thank you for watching our video. For more tutorials on C Sharp, hit subscribe and click the reminder. Give us a like so the video can be visible to more people.